Hey, it's your boy DJ Wolf on the mic here. I got some things on my mind here. Several things. First of all, why the, f- why the hell do these DC drivers like to ride your ass? There's bad traffic, and they, and they just continually do it anyway. They continually do it every single night. All right. Um, first and maybe second, I am up for bitch. Um, I uh, still debating about voting or not. I, I, I'm really in a, qua- a quagmire about that. Because, like I said, I like Bernie Sanders. I respect Hillary Clinton. I, I, I will say that. But the thing of it is, I'm not a huge fan of either one overall. I do somewhat respect Bernie Sanders. Get the hell out of the way. These people cannot drive. I somewhat do respect Bernie Sanders. And the reason why I respect Bernie Sanders is because of Bernie Sanders' track record of what he actually done. Instead of just talking, yeah, he actually does some major stuff. What are these fools doing out here, man? What the fuck the way? Yeah. These two got the worst drivers on the planet. This fool is enough between the damn line. And, and, and not, instead of getting in line where they're supposed to be, they like riding on the line. Like between the dotted lines, they're like half in and half out. I'm like, what are you doing? This is why I hate driving in the District of Columbia. I, I really do. I really hate driving in D.C. D.C., I mean, I don't, Maryland ain't much better, but Maryland's better on my side to, uh, uh, of the DMV than it is in D.C. Because D.C. drivers are the worst. I don't care where you go in D.C. I don't care if it's northwest, southeast, southwest, northwest, northeast. You know, it doesn't matter. They are terrible. You know, uh, I'll give you an example. One night, me and my wife was going to his uh, restaurant over in north, upper northwest. And uh, we went to the, steak, the steakhouse. I forgot the name of the place. The steak is off the hook. It's near 14th Street. And... Uh, the traffic, it took us 45 minutes to get over there. What we normally would have routine took like 35. This is like on a Friday. I mean, early Friday evening. It still took forever to get out there. Why? I have no clue. It might have been Saturday. I don't remember. But it, it just, it, it just, it took an inordinate amount of time to get over to where we had to go. It was ridiculous. Matter of fact, mine took an hour. Because traffic was so bad and the people came to ride. But anyway, uh, before I forget what I was going to talk about, speaking of D.C., there's a uh, a new complex that they're talking about building in the District of Columbia. And this fool's going to try to outrun me. You're not outrunning me. You're going to get back or move up front. I ain't got time for this mess. These people are so stupid. They drive so stupid out here. They really do. It's like, oh, I got to get in front of you. I got to get in front of you. Okay, if you'll get in front, get in front. But don't try to get in front when you know lane right now. So move back. If I'm already ahead of you, move on up or move on back. These people drive so stupid out here. And this is probably why I should start doing my shows uh, when I get on the Maryland side because I don't deal with all that mess as much. But anyway, uh, oh, let's talk about uh, the district. Speaking of the uh, District of Columbia, uh, they're building a new place called uh, St. Elizabeth's East. It's going to be a whole new, they start talking about entertainment and sports complex. They already have one at the Verizon Center over in in north in northeast I mean uh you know over on the other side of DC and uh St. Elizabeth East is based on the St. Elizabeth Hospital complex and campus that uh was there for many years that house uh the mentally disabled I'll put it like that and uh they uh, actually closed that facility down a number of years ago the land was actually uh, bought out. I don't remember who bought it out, but it had been bought out. And uh, it's now it's in the process of becoming an uh, entertainment sports complex. Well, the reason why I'm bringing it up, I heard a conversation that the community, you know, it was a community meeting about, uh, you know, questions regarding uh, what's going to happen, what's going to take place with it and all that. And the guy mentioned something about uh, trying to get jobs, for, you know, you know get people placed on jobs, get, you know, people you know, from different areas around uh, Ward 8 down there to get placed on job. All right, Ward 8 is the section down there that 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 uh, is going to be taken over with this project. What are these people doing in the damn way? So anyway, uh, one of the 
things that he said that kind of bothered me. He said, well, you know, you got people that don't have uh, birth certificates and license that cost $23 to get a, uh, birth, uh, get a birth certificate replacement. So my question was, and I'm going to watch more of the video. I, I still didn't understand that. How in the hell in 2016 you can't afford $23 to get a birth a, a, a copy of your birth certificate? I'm like, really? 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 I, I, I just, it, it boggles my mind when I heard him say that. I say, so you're making excuses for somebody who can't afford $23 to get a replacement birth certificate so that maybe they'd be able to get a job and get other things that might be meaningful to what they actually need. I was shocked by that. I was truly, truly shocked. I was like, are you serious? Are you serious? He was saying as though it cost $23 is a lot of money to get your birth certificate or to find a replacement for your birth certificate. You, you, first of all, you got to understand, they have to find the records to actually find, to validate about your birth. So, yeah, it's going to cost a little bit of money. Because you lost it, you got to get a replacement. That's the same thing with driver's license. I mean, that's how it works. I mean, really? And he was saying that was, that was, that was too much money. I said, that's not too much money. These fools, I didn't have to tell you. I'm like, are you serious? You thought that that was too much money? Yeah, he, he thought it was too much money. I said, oh, well. Yeah, more traffic. <laughs> it seemed like I'm out the pan in the fire. But anyway, and I'm like, and then he was talking about, well, you got some guys out here that don't, that that, that, that you got some these people out here that, that try to get jobs that they can't read. I can't read. 2016, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. And this is my take on it. I, I'm sorry. Anybody... And I do mean anybody. Anybody under the age of 70. Really anybody. Truthfully, anybody under the age of 50. But definitely anybody under the age of 70. And I'm talking about really trying to say from 50 on down. All right. Who can't read in 2016. You got a serious problem. And definitely nobody. I'm telling you. Especially nobody under 40. If you're under 40 in, in 2016 and you don't know how to read and you've been in this country long enough where you were educated enough to, to be able to learn how to read, that's just a piss-ass excuse. I'm sorry. It's a piss... You can't read? Really? When he said that, and I mean, I don't care if he's talking about ex-convicts or because they have programs for people to learn how to read, even in prison. I don't even want to hear that bullshit. I'm sorry. That was, To me, that was just an excuse. That's an excuse to say, well, we need jobs, but we got guys on how to read. Why the hell do you not have anybody that knew how to read in 2016? It's beyond me. Especially somebody who, who's a generation under me. That makes no damn sense. And I heard him say that. I say, dude, y'all need to snap somebody's teacher or somebody's mama or somebody. But that don't make any sense. You know, I hope I never find out that we have an illiteracy rate in this country with American-born children that don't know how to read in 2016. I'm going in on somebody. I'm going in on something. Seriously, though, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. If that is true, that makes no damn sense at all. No excuse in 2016 for nobody... Uh, who born in this country after, uh, at least after I was born, you know, not to be able to read. I mean, come on. There are reading programs, there are libraries. I mean, come on. Really, in this, in this, in the past century, really. Okay. Maybe the early part of, uh, of the last century, but this part, no excuses at all. I'm sorry. None. Period. In the latter half of the last half of the century, too. <laughs> No excuses. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. It's just none. There aren't any. Sorry. I have excuses. It, it, it just shocked me when he was saying all that. I say, dude, are you kidding me? You know, I can understand, you know, to take them, some guys, you know, just hanging on the streets and get, you know, get them jobs. But you got to motivate these guys to do what they need to be doing out here. 
And I and and, and I, again, I say part of the issue is all these dad. And you know, the funny thing I know is he didn't tackle was teen pregnancy. I ain't really used it, but everything but that. It's, it's, it, and I know so a lot of conversations we always hear about what black you know people need need all this and all that. One thing I never hear him talk about is you know team practice. That's an issue they do not want to tackle for some strange reason. I know why. You know, it's taboo. You know, it's taboo to talk about, but it ain't too taboo to talk about when you got fourteen kids in the house that you can't take care of. Yeah, there was a video. I saw that this woman had. Well, she had fifteen kids. She couldn't take, and I think she, I think thirteen of them live with her. And she like, who will take all these kids? I'm like, you bitch. Excuse my French. You made them. You will take care of them. You and whoever else, other daddies, the the daddies of the kids that made them. You know, no offense. I mean, that's real talk. Yeah, when she said that, I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. But she actually said that. I was like, oh, my goodness. The reason why I say this, man, the reason why I say this, people, because in 2016, we got to stop with all these excuses about, well, you know, we got reading and literacy problems. Why? All these resources... It's funny that the kids can go out and post uh, YouTube videos and you can't read? What does that say about, about, about this generation if that's the case? And I'm not saying that that's a fact. But if that is, if that is true, we got some serious problems. You know? You really got a serious problem. You can't afford, tw- in this day and age, you can't afford $23 to go get a birth certificate. That's pathetic. And that's what the guy was saying. So I was like, but he was saying, oh, yeah, they just, okay, it was $23 too high. I was like, no, it's not. It's a little steep, but yeah, but you got to have it. That's the bottom line, regardless. I was like, that's crazy. So because it costs $23, that means you ain't going to try to go get your birth certificate. Then you would say, oh, fuck it, I ain't got no birth certificate, I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm, why do we have, I mean, I... I yeah. To me personally, I think sometimes we make excuses about everything. We do. And to me, well, I didn't know they were building a building behind there. To me, the shit gets old. It gets real old and real sad because you got generations are still saying the same old thing. You know. I asked. Uh, I asked this kid one time. That's a true story. I said, what you want to be when you grow up? You know what the kid told me? Play football. I said, well, what if the football situation don't work out? You know what the kid told me again? I don't know nothing else. Now, his mom got five kids. He's one of five. That is the most That's the saddest thing I've ever heard I ain't going to say pathetic I'm going to say sad in this case And I know what that's about Because He don't have a man figure To motivate him You know And I know you got some of y'all Single mothers that are like oh, Well maybe you should be at No maybe you should force your goddamn men Who y'all sleeping with To start doing this stuff And make them accountable or well, stop sleeping with them. That's the bottom line. One or the other. If you can't do one, do the other. Cut them off. You know? It's ridiculous. I mean, and, and, you know, and it's the same cycle. What I'm trying to get you to understand, this cycle or this mess got to stop, man. At some point, you got to be responsible, be mature enough, and be adult enough to take care of your fucking responsibilities, man. I get, I get really angry about that because it's too, that's what creates a lot of the drama that's in our communities today, and it keeps going on and on and on and on. And while that's going on, we're still making excuses for all that shit. I, I was thinking, uh, thinking back about that brother who got killed by that cop in uh, I think it was Cincinnati, Ohio. 
back home in Ohio. And uh, the guy's mother was like, you know, referring to the video where he was playing with the cop. He was, you know, mess trying, trying to, you know, he had a little banner, you know, mess with the cop. Thinking, he, you know, making the cop think he was drinking. He wasn't drinking. All right. So Miles was on there, was like, well, he had chill, but he was just playing with him. First of all, old lady, and I hate to say it, but I mean, I'm being, I, I'm, I'm saying for, for a fact, old lady, first of all, your son was too old to be playing with some damn cop, all right? He was a grown-ass man. That's number one. And I'm not defending the cop for any reason by what he did. Second thing is that you can't make excuses for a grown-ass dude who should know better than be playing with some cop. Number three, and I ain't like say I'm, I'm not defending the cop in any stretch of imagination. But the cop didn't know what he was up against when that dude was doing that. When he went in his glove compartment, playing around with a bob, pretending like he was going to get drunk. You know, he didn't know what he was up against. He really didn't. You know? So... I'm gonna leave it at that. I I, don't, I forgot the whole story, but that part I do remember very well. And I was like, when the mother said that, I was like, "Are you serious? Really?" So we just gotta stop making excuses. This this is the year, and I said before, I said again, this got to be the year of no excuses anymore. Okay, no excuses. Not even when it comes to voting. And like I said, myself personally, I'm still on the side in 2016. I'm leaning a little bit towards Bernie Sanders. But then I don't even know if I'm at a point, me personally, if I'm at a point, if I trust any 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 of these candidates anymore. And here's the thing that I found today when I was watching TV. Uh, I caught, caught a little bit of the uh, campaign. And, and here, uh, Donald Trump worry about what the Pope said about him instead of this son of a bitch worry about what he's going to do for his country <laughs> other than to spill out a lot of rhetoric uh, ret- ret- rhetoric that people just want to hear sound bites from and speaking of that that's all I've been hearing from these Republicans these Republican candidates aren't talking about any issues that, uh, that need to be addressed about people that they need to help you know why because they don't plan on doing it you know I would rather you, uh, you know, b- to be honest, talk about the issues and make an effort to do something by it versus not talking about it at all. Because to me, talking about it at all, I, and that may be the plan. Maybe that's the reason why they do that shit. Maybe the reason why they decide not to talk about it at all because they figure if, you, if they don't talk about it, you ain't got a reason to uh, go vote. And I'm talking about for the people who actually want to hear the issues. Because those st- constituents don't give a fuck. They could care less about whether you got clean water or not. It's not in their neighborhood. They could care less if you got crime in your neighborhood. As long as it ain't in their neighborhood. They could care less if you got joblessness in your neighborhood. Because as long as it ain't in their neighborhood, they could care less. You know? But I know one thing. At the end of the day, we got to stop with these excuses about why we can't do this and why we can't do that. You can't blame everything on politics. Some you can, though. But I mean, just saying. But if, they, if you don't vote, you know, then you have to understand the reason why you can't make get change made. Now, that I'll say myself, you know. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. I, you know, I'm, I'm just to a point, it's like, when hopefully one day we'll get our head up, heads out of our asses, we'll stop making excuses about why we got all these kids that we ain't taking care of, stop sleeping around every time Dick and Harry think they all want to help you out. You know, or you stop sleeping with the first one you think they want to help you out. And get your mind right. You know, prepare your kids for the future that you didn't have. You know, prepare your kids for a future that they need to have that you won't have if you don't have a, a great future. Or at least not one like your kids could have. You know, because at the end of the day, you want your kids to have that future and you don't want to hold them back that's right you know what I mean drop the mic this is DJ Wolf um, 
I got more in the back burner on that and a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> I may do a show this weekend. I don't know yet. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to continue to do my daily show. My daily shows I will be doing every day if I have to do it twice a day. Um, but in any case, uh, any questions, comments, agreements, disagreements, likes, dislikes, suggestions, I don't care. You know, either way, I do care. Just let me know. <laughs> uh, I can be reached at fall to here at gmail.com, fall to here at outlook.com. Uh, my Twitter page is at fall to here on Twitter. And my YouTube channel is fall to here TV. All right, guys. I want to try to cut a little short here because this traffic is batshit crazy out here tonight. It's DJ Wolf. I'll talk to you guys later.